Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about SDC or Smile Direct Club and we are going to talk about if this stock is now a buy. Now this company is getting a lot of interest now after this week because the stock had a massive dip in the share price after its earnings report and people are looking at this now thinking is this a buying opportunity, can I make money on this company, is this drop a bit of an overreaction which is good to see because I feel like only January, February time this year we had quite a lot of investors that kind of got into the mindset of looking at a, stock, a lot of stocks that had gone up 100, 200, 300 percent and a lot of these stocks were like no revenue and people were thinking okay can I go buy this company, is this a good stock to go buy and it was just like no just stop doing that and now we're kind of getting back to a stock market where people are actually starting to look at stock prices, market cap values and thinking okay that's just lost half its value in a couple of weeks. Is that an overreaction? Is this a company that's now trading at $5 that should be worth $10? And it's good to see people and investors are all getting back to uh, a better mindset of looking into stocks, which is, like I said, really good to see compared to where we were at the start of the year. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through Smile Direct Club and see if I personally will buy it. I did look into this company about four months ago and um, when I looked at this company four months ago I posted it on Patreon actually and um, on Patreon I pretty much went to say that it's okay but at the moment it still needs to go lower for me to go buy it and since then it's gone from about eight dollars back now down to five dollars so I will take another look into it and this time I did an even bigger dive so basically this is all the information that I kind of found out uh, yesterday when looking into into the stock so I did, a couple, did put a couple of hours of research into, the, into this company and I'll share that with you guys today and I'll go through a few things like the company, the product, talk about the chart, valuation, the drop and earnings, the growth potential, balance sheet, insiders and management and of course will I buy the company so we're, we'll take a look. Now just to let you know I said this yesterday but there is currently an offer going on at stake. So if you join stake, it's the first link in the description. If you join through there, you get two free shares if you deposit within 24 hours, which is not a bad offer, even if you don't want to use a platform, you know, get them free shares in. And uh, to be fair though, it is a pretty decent platform as well. So if you do want to get them, uh, take a look because it's a very good offer that's going on in this month of August. So uh, yeah, worth claiming in my opinion. But we'll get stuck into Smile Direct Club. So basically Smile Direct Club is a company that produces these clear liners, which you can see all these photos here. And obviously the clear liners are there to straighten your teeth and give you a better smile. Now the industry itself is a industry that isn't a massive growth industry, but it's still growing a fair bit as you can imagine. People are getting more conscious about their appearance and their smile and one thing that a lot of people like to do is have a, their teeth a lot straighter I guess um, so and uh, I guess you could say white teeth as well but straight teeth as well you know cosmetics is an industry that's definitely growing a lot more in the last kind of decade and yeah there is some growth here it's not a hyper growth area but it is in a good growing industry. Smile Direct Club go through the point of view of being uh, cheaper than a lot of the alternatives so you can see here they go for straighter teeth for up to 60% less than braces and you can see here the, the price in here is uh, make a one-time payment of 1553 or you can pay monthly uh, which is finance and this is cheaper than probably one of the market leaders which was Avisaline so uh, they're a lot more expensive and also if you get the classic braces as well which obviously if you've got the Smile Direct Club um, aligners then which don't work for every um, case of straightening teeth but you still some people will still need the metal braces but still uh, it's a lot more cheaper than their main competitor which is Avisaline which is obviously owned by Align or you get the classic metal braces but like you probably think you know if you get the metal braces obviously it takes a lot more time to fit them as well as that you have to go for more regular visits which then obviously cost more money and obviously people don't notice the clear aligners compared to metal braces so the big appeal here is that you get some a product that's a lot cheaper you don't have to have as many visits that also saves money and also the if you ha compared to a classic metal brace is that they're obviously clear now like i said um clear braces don't um, and not as effective as the metal ones so you can't for some cases you'd still have to get metal braces but for quite a lot of people the ability to have uh, less maintenance less visits and also cheaper will be quite appealing but I thought I would just have a quick flick through the reviews just to see what people do think of it and it's actually pretty well rated um, I actually went on my local Smile Direct Club shop um, which is where you'd go to get um, your teeth scanned so you get the Invisalign that will fit you or you can do it by post um, and you'll get a mold and you basically have to like bite in the mold and then you get an align through uh, your clear aligner through that 
and then you get your online dentist appointments which I think are like four and then your treatment's pretty much done in 12 months uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's got 4.1, which I think is pretty good. And um, when I look at, when I go into a lot of reviews, I do like to see probably four star or above because you think about, you know, when people go to leave reviews, most of the time people only think about leaving reviews when it's something negative. So um, yeah, you never ever really see anywhere on Trustpilot that does have five stars, I guess. Um, so I think four stars is a pretty good review. Obviously you have the couple of people that do complain about it, but overall I was pretty happy to see it actually had a pretty good rating. Now just going onto a chart, you can see here, this is the massive drop off that we had on earnings. It's absolutely fallen off a cliff. At the moment, there is a few people trying to buy up this little dip. So, uh, and it's looking strong in pre-market as well at the moment as recording this video. If we do go onto the stock chart, we can see here, this is when it actually came onto the stock market in September, 2019. It IPO'd $18. So to see it's down at $5 now, oh, it's been a, been a rough time. We're down 41% and uh, pretty much after the IPO as well. Um, yeah, 80% drop off, um, obviously right before the CV situation, but even then it was uh, it was struggling a little bit. Did pull a little bit of a recovery in, um, and then once again we did fall off, but yeah, it's still massively, you, you know, you look at the IPO, it's $18, we're down at $5. It is, it is crazy to think that this company is was used to be a 8 billion company, I believe, and uh, now it's a 2 billion company. And I guess it all goes to the point of view is, you know, with, with this sell off, is this a time to go buy this company at these sort of prices? Now I'm going to say this here uh, before I do go on to talk about the company in a little bit more detail is that when you do have drop offs like this, there is a chance you just see that for no reason, you know, people see this company at a certain price and think, you know what, I I'm going to go buy it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can pick the bottom here and it goes up. And a lot of these companies that are massively sold off like this. You know, when they're massively beaten down, they can have pops for no reason. Like they can be that sold off that either don't even need to financially perform. People just go, you know what, this is too low. We'll go buy it. So even though I'm going to look at this point of view from the company of like a long term investment of two to five years, there is the chance that because this company is so sold off in the short term, you could see a little bit of a pop for no reason on this company and it does go back up to seven or eight dollars and people will play that game to try get a quick return. So you could easily see a 30% pop in the short term because it is sold off, but I am trying to look at this from a, a, a two to five year hold. Now the valuation side of it isn't too bad. We've got, it's not profitable, so we've got no P ratios to work with, but um, we'll just pretend that I'm actually still paying for Y charts here and ignore this. Um, but yeah, a bit of a cheapskate over here. But you can see when it came to the stock market, it was about a nine PS ratio. Uh, and then it went all the down, way down here, which was probably around about a two price sales ratio. And then we had the bump up, which it went up a lot higher, touching about nine again. And then it came back down to two. So from a, a price sales ratio point of view, this is about the lowest it does go. So that is a, a really strong thing is like, you know, this is, it could go lower, but this is kind of the lowest it has ever been. So it kind of gives you a good idea that it is it is massively beaten down. And just to point it, put it to a point of view is if we look at Smile Direct Club's main competitor, which is the line technology, you can see here, they trade at 15. So um, yeah, you can see that is a, a massive difference between uh, it's, it's big major competitor here that is a bit of a valuation gap uh, for sure. Now this is the earnings report which basically sent Smile Direct Club down and there was pretty much, if you ever go look at the analyst update, pretty much every analyst downgraded the company after this earnings report. Um, you look at the earnings report, uh, EPS was me, uh, uh, a miss, losing a lot of money. Revenue 174 million which was 62% growth uh, year over year but missed by 24 million which is a huge miss. Um, and also the guidance changed as well. Now, a lot of this came down to blaming the CV situation still, and also that they had a cyber attack. Now, I think potentially they could have been a little bit more, talk to investors a little bit more and say, you know, this is gonna be a bad quarter before it actually happened, but these are big numbers missed. And even here on the actual revenue, um, you know, if you looked at this 62% uh, growth, you'd think, actually, that's really good growth. But realistically, you are now overlapping CV numbers. So CV numbers, basically you had a shut down economy. So you have the easiest numbers to beat. So 62% growth looks good, but that's only because they have the easiest numbers to beat. And when you actually look at re analyst revenue, they missed by a huge amount. And just to put that into context, they did a, a revenue of 174 million. But if I look at what they did pre-CV in this quarter, they were actually touching about 184 million here. 
So actually when we compare it to a two year change, they've still not beaten their pre-CV numbers, which is kind of um, worrying because you look at a lot of companies right now, a lot of the companies that were affected by the CV, we've got to a point now where they are level with the CV or they're beating CV numbers. And just to kind of put that into like a perspective against their main competitor, Align. If we have a look at Align, you can see this was like 2020's numbers. And you can see here, now look at this, we're, we're higher than pre-CV. Look at this is pre-CV, we're now higher than pre-CV. And that's the little difference is that Align is trading at a rich valuation, but it deserves to because it is now ahead of where it was. Something like a Smile Direct Club, sure, it looks like they're doing very impre impressive growth at 62%, but realistically, they're still not really above CV numbers. So the thing about, for me, is like, how long do you blame CV for a poor performance on revenue? Because there's a lot of other companies and your main competitor as well is not struggling anymore, and that was a very big worry for me. The other big worry for me is that I had when the company IPO'd, if you look at the quarter over qu quarter growth here, this is really strong growth. This is when it was growing at a very healthy rate. We look at what happened just before the CV, one year before the CV, look at what happened to the revenue. We had a peak out here, a drop, a little bit of a raise, but no, nothing higher. And same again, um, pretty much um, the last quarter, it was flat. So if you look over the course of a period here of about a year, you can see just before the CV situation, Smile Direct Club was already starting to struggle for a lot of growth. Whereas the year before it was growing nicely, the year before CV it was struggling for growth and boom. And now what do we have a year, uh, another year on after the CV? We have a company that sure it looks like it's pretty good growth, but it's still not back to where CV was. And its main competitor is still putting in now even better growth. So it says to me there's a little bit of a growth problem going on here in Smile Direct Club compared to a lot of competitors. And it's one of those where how long do you carry on blaming the CV situation when there's some problems clearly in the company that is, it's struggling for growth. So that was one of the little worries that I did have when I read that earnings report and I looked at the history of what the company was growing at. And if I was to go back on their past growth here, you can see, look at the sharp growth and you can just see it just starts to flatline a little bit on previous quarters that it had. Now, future growth wise, analysts are predicting that it will lose a lot of money. I think it might just kind of stay where it is about or even shrink them losses. So I'm not sure that analysts have this completely right. But on revenue, you can see here it is expected to get back to some decent growth a little bit down the line, talking about 20% growth. So analysts here are predicting really strong growth. But my big problem is, is it going to get to that 20% growth mark? Because I look at the company here and it's it's been struggling for growth for two years. To get to 20% growth is a, a big, big belief that they're going to get there. Because I, what I can see at the moment, they aren't performing, which is a little bit of a worry for me. But if they were to get to 20% growth, then this would be good. But my problem is at the moment, what I can see here is there's a, a revenue growth problem going on at this company. Now, going on to a financial sheet point of view, the debt to equity is getting a lot worse. The debt is raising up on this company a lot more. We look at what they have going on inside the company. They've got 376 million in cash and 737 million in debt. So this is something that I do not like to see on a company um, when there is a lot more debt to the cash side of it as well. So overall, I'm looking at this company financially and also they've and the thing is they're going to lose money as well which is also a little bit of a worry sure i think they might get to profitability maybe in a year or two but at the moment the, the the financials are a bit unhealthy as well so even the balance sheet's a little bit weak on this one which is a little bit of a worry now getting on to the insiders and management team the management team is very experienced a lot of it has been with the company for a very long time I have a quicker look at the ownership of the company and I was very surprised to see for a company that's only been on the stock market for a while that I did not see any kind of um, insiders or management have a big hold in the company which always worries me that they have no skin in the game and also what worries me a lot more is when I see the stock going down and then management don't buy shares because I think well if you know the company very well and you think you're undervalued and you know the company better than anyone this would be a time to show confidence and buy your shares and there's none of that going on which makes me a little bit more nervous as well. Insiders wise the institutions are buying quite heavy which is positive but just that point of view you know I had to go all the way down here uh, to see the, the CEO and the uh, chairman have a lot of shares and I was also very surprised to see the founders currently have such a small stake. For a company that's been on the stock market for so long I was like this is really weird why have the founders not got a massive holding in the side of the company and I did a little bit of digging on the history of the company as well 
and I actually found out that the um, directors actually got into a massive lawsuit about dumping a lot of shares um, when the, the stock came onto the stock market. Nothing really happened of it, but it was very interesting to see that uh, what had happened is they basically took the company public and very quickly a lot of shares were dumped by the insiders of the company, which was very worrying uh, and obviously pretty much justifies why uh, we kind of had, when the, the stock came onto the stock market, this massive dip uh, all the way down here. It's you know, obviously quite worrying to see something like that happen. Uh, it's also worth saying that I also found out there was a short report released on Spar Direct Club, I think at the back end of 2019 or 2020. Um, so that is something just to have a quick read through. I didn't think nothing of it when I did read it. They also have a lot of cases against them for their, their products, uh, you know, lawsuit cases. But once again, um, I won't worry about it exactly too much, but just worth noting there from what I did dive into the company, the current or past lawsuits that have been on it. Um, so yeah, so overall, what is my kind of thoughts on the company? Will I buy this company? So yeah, when I look through it all, the company itself, um, the product, I think is pretty good. I think that cheaper alternative is a good thing. And I look at the company itself and think, you know what would be very interesting at this sort of valuation is it is dirt cheap and for someone to come in and buy this company it would actually be a very good move. Um, so yeah, the company itself, I like the what, where it's at, I like the product and I think it will do very well. The chart itself, obviously you can see that it's massively sold off and I feel like um, even at these sort of prices, there will be a, a couple of people that come in and bottom pick this company thinking it's massively sold off. I'll take a 10 to 30% jump on, on this company. So I think that it's, you know, obviously at the moment, I expect a little bit of a jump on the company. The valuation, the valuation is obviously the cheapest it's ever been, um, which is, um, Obviously what you want to do is you want to get the com a company that probably should be worth $10 at $5 and you look at the valuation and it's very good. The drop on earnings um, is probably deserved because the earnings were horrible. If I was to give the earnings report a score, I'd probably give them a one out of 10. <laughs> it was it was one of the worst earnings report. The growth side of it is my big worry here. Um, really everything, everything you see up here, this is what I really like about the company. The problem is, is when I get down to the bottom side of the li the, this list, the growth is my worry at the moment because what I've seen at the moment is a company that is behind everyone else. You know, you look at a line, they, they've recovered from the CV dip and they, they, they're they growing even faster now. You look at like an InMode, for example, InMode is in the health industry. They've been posting strong earnings. Smart Direct Club are struggling for growth. They're struggling for growth, there's no way to put it. And the problem is, is that these guys are expected to grow 20% next year. At the moment, there's no chance I can see them growing at 20% with the numbers they're putting out. So the growth side of it is the warm big part that's making me a bit nervous to buy this one. The balance sheet wise is definitely um, not, the growth is the, my main worry of this company. The balance sheet is um, not great, but I could potentially get past it. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, so that's something that I'm a, a little bit taking into consideration. Um, if, if it just had about half the debt what it did do, then I'd be happy, but because of the amount of debt it does have, that is my a little worry that I do have. The insiders and the management, um, I am a little bit worried that the insiders just dump, dump the shares and not many of them have ownership. I'm worried that not many of them have bought and shown a bit of confidence. That does worry me a little bit and also the management how management have struggled to carry on growing this company after 2019 basically is a little bit worry and they're not kind of on top of things here. So I do question the management team slightly on this one. I feel like the management team could be stronger in this company. And I guess that kind of leads me <laughs> to the last point, which will I buy the company? So as you can tell, I have basically three things here that I'm worried about with this company. Now, normally if I have one thing that I don't like, I can potentially get past it, but these are three big things that I'm worrying on. If it was this, I could maybe let it go. But growth, you know, what's gonna move a share price in the next two to five years, it's gonna be growth. My problem is, is with growth is these guys, these guys are expected to grow 20% and they're struggling, they are struggling big time. You know, they've only, on the last earnings report, they've just come out and said they're gonna to have to downgrade the guidance because they can't meet it. And these, a lot of analysts are predicting 20% growth on this company next year. I can't see them doing it. I can't see them hitting 20% growth next year. I might be proved wrong, but at the moment I just can't see it. So for me, 
this is the big problem because what's going to happen is if they keep doing these numbers investors analysts are just going to get fed up and sell off or analysts are you know, gonna keep a sell rate on this company. And this is why the company's not really performed since the IPO because the growth has been slowing so much. So this has to change. They either have to prove to me that A, they can get to 20% growth, which they've got probably uh, two more quarters to do that. And if I see light signs of life there, then I might reconsider. But at the moment, I can't see it happening. Or what happens is the company comes out and they say, you know what, we can't do 20%. We go to 10%, sure that might hurt the company in the stock price in the short term, but long term they give themselves more realistic chances to beat the growth and that would make it um, a lot better. So at the moment this is my big problem that I do have is they have numbers that I don't think they can hit uh, and I think they'll struggle. Uh, obviously balance sheet that could be better but I, I can let that go slightly a little bit and also when I look at the insiders management this kind of just links to this that there's there's proof to me that even insiders management aren't buying the company because even they know we're not in a good place right now i guess so i guess this kind of leads me back to the point of like will i buy will i buy this this company and the answer really is that um no i'm, I'm not going to buy a uh, smile direct club at the moment um even though everything the, the top part looks good you know the the chart how much it sold off the valuation it's at and I do believe that you know the, it could go up a little bit from here because people will fancy the drop and buy it. I look at the company in two to five years and I still see a few things that I'm not happy with and this needs to improve uh, massive before I get involved in the company, um, before I can touch it. And I look at the company and think, I, it's one that I'd like to buy at this valuation, but this needs to improve before I do touch it. So I will watch, I will watch this company close and just see if they do start improving it. And then I might potentially buy it but yeah, that needs to improve. And I just think about this is like, I look at the company like this and I think, you know, it's not a bad opportunity. It's probably a, one of the better opportunities out there in the stock market. But when I compare it, is it one of my top three stocks I'd like to buy now? It's not. So why would I buy it? Why would I spend money on this when I potentially have another company, let's say a Corsair, which I think is probably a better opportunity than this. And I look at this and think, is my money better to go in this company or do I think the other company is a better opportunity? I think the company, other company is a better opportunity. So yeah, at the moment, I just can't fancy it. Like I said, I will keep a close eye on it and they'll, if if I can see this improve, I will reconsider it. But that is my big worry at the moment is that they are struggling for growth and that at the moment, what analysts are predicting on this company, I just don't think they'll be able to do it and we'll have more of this earnings, earnings misses, drops on share prices. So at the moment, I am gonna give this a bit of a miss, but I am gonna watch it closely and I will re reconsider it if I see some improvement. So hopefully that little deep dive into uh, Smart Direct Club was useful for you. And uh, yeah, at the moment, it's not a buy for me. It's not the worst opportunity out there, especially the valuation it's at, but for me, I need to see some improvements there to, for me to touch it personally. So yeah, hope it was useful. If you could smash the like button, if you're new, subscribe and you found this video helpful. But that's the video for today and I'll see you in the next one.